Hello everybody, this is the challenge question walkthrough for Edexcel's Pure Year 1 textbook, Chapter 2. Okay, our first question from exercise 2b. Given that x is positive, solve the equation 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 2 is equal to 28 over 195. Now one way we can do this question is to first put the left hand side over a common denominator. So that would be x, x plus 2. So we get 1 over x times x plus 2 over x plus 2 plus uh, 1 over x plus 2 times x over x. And we get x plus 2 over x, x plus 2 plus x over x, x plus 2. And so we get 2x plus 2 over x, x plus 2. And that is equal to 28 over 195. And now we can cross multiply to get 195 2x plus 2 is equal to 28x x plus 2. Expanding brackets on both sides, we get 390x plus 390 equals 28x squared plus 56x. And moving more terms onto one side, we get 28x squared minus 334x minus 390 equals 0. And putting this straight into your calculator, you should get x equals 13 or x equals minus 15 over 14. And because we're told in the question that x is positive, you can reject x equals minus 15 over 14. And our final answer is x equals 13. Okay, the next question from exercise 2D, part A says, show that the solutions to the equation ax squared plus 2bx plus c equals 0 are given by x equals minus b over a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus ac over a squared. Now the first thing we can do here is divide both sides of this equation by a to make our lives a little bit easier. So x squared plus 2b over a x plus c over a is equal to 0. And now we can complete the square on this hand side to solve the equation. So we get x, uh, x plus b over a squared minus b squared over a squared and then adding back on the c of a equals zero from these two terms onto the right hand side we get x plus b over a squared is equal to b squared over a squared minus c over a which we can write as ac over a squared multiplying both top and bottom by a and so we get that x plus b over a is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus ac all over a squared and taking the b over a onto the other side, we get exactly what our question asked for. x equals minus b over a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus ac all over a squared. Now part b says, hence or otherwise, show that the solutions to the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero can be written as the quadratic formula here. So, what have we noticed going from this equation at the top to this new equation from the general form of a quadratic? Well, we see that the, the only thing that's changed is the, the um, coefficient of x has turned from 2b to b. So we've halved the coefficient. So everywhere we see b here, we can replace with a half b. So we get x equals minus a half b over a plus or minus the square root of a half b squared which is a quarter b squared minus ac all over a squared and distributing the square root on top and bottom and taking the 2 here down to the bottom we get a half b over 2a plus or minus the square root of a quarter b squared minus ac over a I'm multiplying both sides of this fraction by 2, we get minus b plus or minus the square root, 2 times the square root of a quarter b squared minus ac all over 2a. And finally, taking the 2 and putting it inside the square root, making sure we multiply by 2 squared, which is 4, we get minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that is the quadratic formula as we need it. Okay, for this question from exercise 2G, 
Part A says, prove that if the values of A and C are given and non-zero, it is always possible to choose a value of B so that f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c has distinct real roots. So for the quadratic to have distinct real roots, we must have that the discriminant is greater than zero, and therefore b squared is greater than 4ac. And now if 4ac is positive, then we can say that b has to be greater than 4ac, so we can always choose a value of b which is greater than 4ac. If 4ac is negative, then b can be any positive number, as any positive number will be greater than a negative number, and therefore it is, it is always possible to find a b. In part b, is it always possible to choose a value of b so that f of x has equal roots? So we know that if f of x has equal roots, then b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, and therefore b squared equals 4ac. And so if 4ac is negative, then there are no possible values of b, such that b squared equals that negative number. Therefore, it is not always possible to choose a value of b. So from this question from exercise 2h, accident investigators are studying the stopping distance of a particular car. When the car is travelling at 20 miles per hour, its stopping distance is 6 feet. When the car is travelling at 30 miles per hour, its stopping distance is 14 feet. And when the car is travelling at 40 miles per hour, its stopping distance is 24 feet. Uh, the investigator suggests that the stopping distance in feet d is a quadratic function of the speed in miles per hour s. And part a says, given that d of s equals a s squared plus b s plus c, find the values of the constants a, b and c. So in this question, they've given us three bits of information from these three lines here. So when s equals 20, we know d equals 6. When s equals 30, we know d equals 14. And when s equals 40, we know that d equals 24. And we can use these three bits of information here to set up a simultaneous equation system with three variables a, b, and c. So for the first bit of information, s equals 20, d equals 6, we get d of s, so 6 equals a times 20 squared, or 400, so 400a, plus b s, which is 20b, and plus c. For the next bit of information, we get 14 equals 30 squared, so that's 900a, plus 30b, plus c. And finally, 24 is equal to 1600a, plus 40b, plus c. Okay. Uh, we can use these three simultaneous equations to get our values of a, b, and c. We can put those into our calculator, and doing so, we get a equals 0.01, b equals 0.3, and c equals minus 4. And that was part a. So part b says, at an accident scene, a car is left behind a skid that is 20 feet long. Use your model to calculate the speed that this car was going at before the accident. So we've got our value of D, and we're trying to find the value of S. So 20 equals A S squared, so 0.01 S squared, plus B S, plus 0.3 S, and plus C, which is minus 4. And solving this quadratic, so we've got 0.01 S squared plus 0.3 S minus 24 equals 0. And putting this into our calculator, we get s equals 36.2 or minus 66.2, so three significant figures. And obviously the speed of the car can't be negative, so here's our answer, 36.2 miles per hour. And finally, for mixed exercise 2, part A says the ratio of the lengths A to B in this line is the same as the ratio of the lengths B to C. Show that this ratio is 1 plus root 5 over 2 to 1. 
Now the first thing we can do is let A be any number we want because it doesn't really matter what the value of A is, we'll still get the same ratios. So here for simplicity, we can let A equal 1. Okay, so we get the ratio A to B or 1 to B is the same as the ratio of lengths B to C. And we want some way to compare these two ratios. So if we multiply both sides of this ratio by B, we get B to B squared is the same as B to C. And therefore B squared equals C. Okay, we can get one more equation from this diagram here, and that is 1 equals B plus C. And using these two equations, we can solve simultaneously. So plugging C equals B squared into this equation here, we get 1 equals B plus B squared. Rearranging, we get B squared plus B minus 1 equals 0. And plugging this into your calculator, you should get that B equals minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And because B is a length, it can't be negative, so we've got B equals minus 1 plus root 5 over 2. And so the ratio that we're looking for is 1 to minus 1 plus root 5 over 2. And to get the in the form we want, so 1 plus root 5 over 2 to 1, we have to divide both sides by minus 1 plus root 5 over 2 to get 1 on the right hand side. So we get 2 over minus 1 plus root 5 to 1. And here we can rationalise the denominator by multiplying top and bottom by minus 1 minus root 5. So we get 2 times minus 1 minus root 5 over minus 1 plus root 5 times minus 1 minus root 5. So that's the difference of two squares, so 1 minus 5. And so we get minus 2 minus 2 root 5 over 4, minus 4, sorry. And that is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. And so our ratio is 1 plus root 5 over 2 to 1 as required. Okay, and finally for part B, show also that the infinite square root, square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 and so on and so on and so on is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. And so we can use a, a neat little trick here and that is to let x equal the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus and so on and so on and so on. And then what we can say here is that this bit inside the square root is actually just x itself. It's the exact same thing, the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus and so on and so on and so on. So we can replace this inner bit by x itself. So we get x equals the square root of 1 plus x. And squaring both sides, we get x squared equals 1 plus x. So we get x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. And plugging this into your calculator, we get x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And since x is the square root of something, we're going to assume it's positive, and so we get x equals 1 plus root 5 over 2. And that is our final answer. Okay, and that is the end of the challenge question walkthrough for chapter 2.